Legal Insurrection Through Lawfare, is Part 2 of Kelly Nelson's Part 1 about Marxist infiltration. As before, we begin with a few relevant quotes. Insurrection is an art, and like all arts has its own laws. Leon Trotsky, lawfare is a weapon designed to destroy the enemy by using, misusing, and abusing the legal system and the media in order to raise a public outcry against that enemy. Professor Susan Teifenbrunn, Thomas Jefferson School of Law. Just the minute the FBI begins making recommendations on what should be done with its information, it becomes a Gestapo. J. Edgar Hoover. The great Intel institutions, which were designed to protect us against the Marxist onslaught, have, in the end, become the most subversive of America's institutions. Anyone today could look at the American intelligence community and guess it was an organizational chart for the old KGB. J. Michael Waller. Cultural Marxism, Critical Theory, and the other excreta of the Common Turns Frankfurt School have rotted American society from within. J. Michael Waller. A nation can survive its fools, even the ambitious, but it cannot survive treason from within. For the traitor appears not to be a traitor. He rots the soul of a nation. He infects the body politic so that it can no longer resist. So wrote Marcus Tullius Cicero. James Clapper and then John Brennan were the workhorses who culturally changed the intelligence community into politically correct diversity and inclusion via Obama's 2011 Executive Order 13583, the EO established government wide initiatives. It was a presidential decree to transform the culture of the entire federal bureaucracy through implementation of critical theory. The Marxist cultural revolution of Antonio Gramsci and Herbert Marcuse was successfully installed. Clapper's enterprise strategy was just the intelligence community portion of Obama's carefully planned White House initiative to inject critical race theory into the entire federal workforce and to use that workforce as an engine of societal change. In Big Intel, Mike Waller tells us that few in our intelligence agencies dissented. CIA operations officer Scott Eulinger, who resigned and went public in 2017, said, The twin serpents of politicization and political correctness, a Soviet term, by the way, walk hand in hand throughout the intelligence community, as well as every other government agency, he added, the U.S. intelligence community is in the midst of a severe crisis. It has been used, or perhaps allowed itself to be used, as a tool of political destruction against some of the same U.S. citizens it was created to protect. When the Obama-era political abuses surfaced, Ulinger said, we are seeing the widespread abuse of intelligence by an incumbent administration to target political opposition. Long a technique in the developing world, which I often witnessed as a CIA station chief working abroad, now the third world has come to roost in the United States. Former FBI agent and whistleblower, Steve Friend, who was suspended indefinitely without pay, commented, the FBI requires two separate diversity trainings per year, yet there is no instruction on violating due process rights or inflicting cruel and unusual punishment. The men and women employed in the 18 different intel agencies have reincarnated the Nazis of Nuremberg with their excuse of just following orders. The Department of Justice is the most heavily politicized of the U.S. government. In 2016, 91.6% gave to Democrats. Homeland Security employees came in at 75% Democrat, and the Department of Education was as high as 96% Democrat. The National Education Association has never donated to a Republican presidential candidate. All federal government departments have moved from very liberal to radical via the red diaper red thread chain of the Obama administration hierarchy. Critical Theory and Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, DEI, remained practically undisturbed by Trump and then emerged revitalized on the first day of Biden's administration. Legal insurrection through lawfare is being planned via Professor Rosa Brooks at Georgetown University Law Center. J. Michael Waller, author of Big Intel, 
How the CIA and FBI went from Cold War heroes to deep state villains has stated, it's a feeder school to the Justice Department, to Supreme Court clerks, and to the entire intelligence community. Everything is planned there. A group of people meet at Georgetown University Law School to think through how to seize power from Trump if he were elected in 2024. The intricacies of what they have planned are mind-boggling. They are planning an insurrection. In his interview with Tucker Carlson, Waller discussed the Transition Integrity Project. What he exposed was extremely disturbing. Red Diaper Baby, Rosa Brooks, law professor at Georgetown University and former Pentagon senior official, and Nils Gilman, a former vice chancellor of the University of California, Berkeley, and a historian at the Berggren Institute, initially organized the Transition Integrity Project in late 2019. Other participants in the project include Michael Steele, John Podesta, Jennifer Granholm, Trey Grayson, Donna Brazil, William Kristall, Edward Luce, Max Boot, and David Fromm. Despite all of them being left of center, the tip is considered bipartisan and, as such retains, a tax-exempt status. The project involves over 100 current and former senior government campaign leaders, academics, journalists, polling experts and former federal and state government officials, and even retired generals chosen by Rosa Brooks for Obama. Retired generals are not civilians. They're still subject to the Uniform Code of Military Justice, and they're involved as co-conspirators planning the overthrow of our government and eliminating a duly elected president. TIP is a short-term project under the auspices of the organization Protect Democracy, which was founded by lawyers from Obama's White House counsel. Protect Democracy echoes the mainstream media mantra, our democracy is in danger. We do not pledge allegiance to the democracy for which we stand, but to the republic for which we stand. Joseph Goebbels' propaganda of repetitious lies is perpetuated by America's Pravda media in calling America a democracy. The tip was to decide the outcome and results of the 2020 election. Their conclusion was that with a Joe Biden win, there would be no protests or street violence. But if Donald Trump won, America would end. Their 2020 meetings were kept secret before the election. Brooks is an adjunct scholar at West Point's Modern War Institute and a senior fellow at the New America Foundation, a liberal think tank in the United States founded in 1999. Top donors to the organization in 2020. One included the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Bloomberg Philanthropies, Ford Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, and United States Department of State. Here is the complete list of their funders. All support, critical theory, and DEI. Waller commented that Brooks, who as a senior Pentagon official selecting who the Obama generals would be, was writing about how we have to do away with civilian control of the military. She was wargaming out military coups against a sitting president, first after a disputed election, and now being the host of an entire project to unseat a president who they agree would have been legally and clearly elected by a majority of the public and electoral votes. They are calling for a military coup. Carlson believes Brooks is a violence fetishist. Brooks has served as a volunteer advisor on defense policy to the Biden administration. She's also a member of the pro-abortion Amnesty International USA and has served on the board of Soros' Open Society Foundations, U.S. Programs Fund, and as a senior advisor at the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor. Brooks was also a consultant for the Open Society Institute and for the NGO Human Rights Watch. She has contributed numerous op-eds and book reviews to The Washington Post, The New York Times, The Atlantic, The Wall Street Journal, and numerous other publications. Rather than having secrecy as they had in 2020, in 2024, they invited media to attend. A reporter from the far-left Atlantic magazine was very disturbed about what they planned. He said this was a real problematic issue for those who believe in the Constitution. Waller stated, Congress is funding things that they know are unconstitutional. The Justice Department is enforcing things that its lawyers know are unconstitutional. And now you have Mary McCord in her group at Georgetown Law writing the whole orchestra for the transition after November of this year. 
to rip the Constitution to shreds. This is banana republic stuff in the name of protecting the Constitution. Mary McCord is another red diaper baby who shows up everywhere. Her Juris Doctorate is from Georgetown University, and for almost 20 years, she was an assistant U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia. In the District of Columbia Court of Appeals, she served as Deputy Chief of the Appellate Division and as Chief of the Criminal Division. She is a National Security Analyst and was Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General and Acting Assistant Attorney General for National Security at the U.S. Department of Justice. McCord, by the way, joined Georgetown University Law Center's Institute for Constitutional Advocacy and Protection, ICAP, a left-of-center academic center at the law school that engages in legal cases on First and Second Amendment issues, among others. McCord's work at the center has been in leading opposition to unlawful militias, stating that the Second Amendment affords no protection to private militias. She also has participated on the National Task Force on Election Crises alongside other leftist election policy advocates. Georgetown University Law School receives a ton of federal money, but they also received Chinese money. Last year, they got a $30 million grant from a Taiwanese businessman who made his fortune as a financier of the Chinese Communist Party on the mainland. This was Georgetown's largest gift in its history since it was founded in the 1700s. McCord, by the way, joined Georgetown University Law Center's Institute for Constitutional Advocacy and Protection, ICAP, a left-of-center academic center at the law school that engages in legal cases on First and Second Amendment issues, among others. McCord's work at the center has been in leading opposition to unlawful militias, stating that the Second Amendment affords no protection to private militias. She also has participated on the National Task Force on Election Crises alongside other leftist election policy advocates. Georgetown University Law School receives a ton of federal money, but they also received Chinese money. Last year, they got a $30 million grant from a Taiwanese businessman who made his fortune as a financier of the Chinese Communist Party on the mainland. This was Georgetown's largest gift in its history since it was founded in the 1700s. He and Andrew Weissman hosted a live taping of their podcast, Prosecuting Donald Trump at Georgetown University. She also did a PBS hour with Judy Woodruff on Trump's false election claims being red meat for extremist groups. McCord was appointed legal counsel for the January 6 committee by Speaker Paul Lousy. She testified to Congress that the insurrection will require not only criminal enforcement mechanisms, but also a civil enforcement mechanism that would allow the U.S. Department of Justice to seek injunctive relief and civil forfeiture against armed paramilitary actors and their organizations. The only people armed on January 6 were the Capitol Police, but McCord had insinuated in other venues that protesters had hidden arms under their coats, despite firearms being illegal in D.C. Her article, It's Time for Congress to Make Domestic Terrorism a Federal Crime, appeared in the website Lawfare. Imagine who would become targets. McCord was also counsel for the Trump Impeachment Committee, both one and two, and is a statutorily designated amicus curiae for the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court and the Court of Review. She has also discussed analyzing and defeating right-wing extremism with the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. McCord is married to Sheldon Snook, who also worked for the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia. In fact, it was McCord who got her husband his job as administrative assistant and court liaison to the public and news media. She recommended him to Judge Hogan of the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, as she had previously clerked for him. Snook also served as spokesman for the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. He currently works in a similar capacity for the U.S. Supreme Court. Snook is a key player. Waller states, This has just become one big club, one huge business, one big grift in many ways, but one big political war now, where you have a merger between hardcore political activists, violence fetishists, and public enemy types, and the people who are supposed to be inside our system to serve our country and protect our Constitution. The great intel institutions, which were designed to protect us against the Marxist onslaught have, in the end,
become the most subversive of America's institutions. Anyone today could look at the American intelligence community and guess it was an organizational chart for the old KGB. If Trump is elected, the TIP has formulated their plans to thwart his goals. Look at Rosa Brooks from Georgetown University and Mary McCord and her husband, Sheldon Snook. They know Trump only has one term, so their allies inside the government will slow walk everything. And already hundreds of pieces of litigation are ready against as yet unnamed Trump administration officials. They intend to hamstring the entire team and all his appointees. Trump's appointees who don't already have clearances won't get them. McCord is a Washington insider with a husband on the Supreme Court staff. So they are networked with the Justice Department and the judges. Sheldon Snook will make sure Trump's people are kept in the right judicial venues to assure a court circuit who will rule favorably in their cases. Worse comes to worse, they will remove Trump via their bot and paid for DEI and critical theory military. But we still have time to stop them. Carlson asked what the RNC was doing, and Waller said he didn't know. Waller made the comment that Rona McDaniel had a big florist and limousine bill, but no one knows if she was organized to attack against these entrenched interests. He then mentioned that the Heritage Foundation has their action plans, as well as the America First Policy Institute, but both of these organizations are controlled opposition. Their membership and donors include Globalist Council on Foreign Relations Members, the Do Nothing Council for National Policy, and the American Legislative Exchange Council, which is funded by the Koch organizations and has long promoted a constitutional convention. Congressman Pete Sessions is chairman of a subcommittee that has jurisdiction over Georgetown University. He wrote a stinging letter to Rosa Brooks regarding the tip results and the baseless accusations she made in her Washington Post article of September 3, 2020, just prior to the election. Mary McCord was cited by Sessions for her recent comments per NBC that we're already starting to put together a team to think through the most damaging types of things that he, Trump, might do, so we're ready to bring lawsuits if we have to. It would be highly inappropriate. Sessions said, for a university that relies on federal funding to conduct partisan political activity intended to undermine a lawfully conducted election. Georgetown University Law Center needs to be shut down. Conclusion The last two chapters of Big Intel are a roadmap for what needs to be done. America's intelligence community, her entire federal bureaucracy, her universities and colleges, her corporations and board members have adopted cultural Marxism, DEI, and critical theory. The Marcuse aficionados are planning a repeat of the 1917 Russian Revolution. Only this time, it is happening in the land of the free and the home of the brave.